Hello, and welcome to Stop Now, a social experiment enterprise where we stop, listen, and share. I am one of your hosts, Nate. Welcome back for another week of our talk show. It is so glad to be back talking to all of you this week. Uh, but I'm not alone. Of course, I am joined by my teammates, uh, my friends here at Stop Now. First of all, we have Amer joining us again this week. Amer, how are you? Yeah, I'm kind of net. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, we have the the man that makes everything possible here, Mayor, the, the, the man behind the curtain, the man behind the mask, the voice of the voiceless, our fearless producer, JK. JK, how are you? I'm good, Nate, and I'm happy to see you back again in uh, full swing. And we have yes. guests like uh, one year before we met with them. You were not there at the time. And I was uh, so happy to meet uh, Bita and Yuchi and... Uh, it's a rerun for me, like uh, going back in memory lane and meeting them again. And also I'm uh, very fond of working with them as well. I wanted to talk about that, but let's introduce them and let's welcome them first. Yes. As, as you mentioned, JK, you had a chance to speak with them last year. This is my first time getting a chance to meet them. So I'm excited for our show today. Uh, but as you said, our guests this week are Yuchi and Bita. Yuchi and Bita, thank you for taking some time to talk with us this week. Thank you for having us. I'm very, I feel great to be here. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you for uh, inviting us. Thank you. Absolutely. So I know JK has got a lot of questions for you guys, uh, you know, meeting back up with you after a year. Uh, but for our audience out there that might not have caught the first time, you came and talked to us here at Stop Now. Can you give us a little bit of background about some of the work that you do? Okay, very good. Yeah, so Yuichi and I, we are the organizers of uh, several meetups on Buddhism and happiness mm. or learning about karma, purpose and meaning of life, and also how to have the right view. And we are trying to build a community of like-minded people who are not... Um, you know, satisfied with the status quo, they expect more from life. They don't think that we're just born to live, you know, eat and sleep like like our pets. <laughs> we believe <laughs> that <laughs> we are <laughs> we are born to do something greater, not just eat mm. and sleep and play. So yeah, we learn about that from the teachings of the Buddha, and uh, we share with the community. And a lot of people who felt maybe mm, their own spiritual background didn't provide them with like a, uh, like cause and effect relationship, how mm -hmm. to uh, question things and go forward, building their future. So that's basically, uh, we are a community of such people and we want to share with anyone who is open and we believe that's how we can spread the light in the world. Uh, not by dwelling on the darkness, but by being problem solver, you know, proactive and believing that happiness is possible for every one of us. Okay. So you talk about the meetups and, and you know, uh, JK showed me a few of the YouTube uh, shows that you have done. Can you tell us how you got started? Like what made you decide to use this medium, you know, uh, uh, this technology to talk to people and tell them about, you know, your, uh, your path? Okay, very good. Uh, yeah, so, you know, I used to go to college campuses. Yeah, mm -hmm. you do, many of us. And we would talk with uh, students on campus or even people on the street. <laughs> That's how I found Buddhism mm -hmm. in my life. <laughs> on campus, <laughs> I got a flyer. That's it. It just came to me 20 some years ago before YouTube, Meetup, any of these things existed. Mm. Yeah, so it transformed my life so much that I always want to reach out. And thanks to technology, <laughs> uh, it's become possible to reach a wider audience. So we are very grateful for that. Mm. So do you find, Bita, that people are more open to hearing new ideas because of what everybody's gone through the last couple of years, you know, with the pandemic and a lot of the difficulties and the problems everybody's faced you feel like people are searching for answers and searching for different ways to live their lives 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's the meaning behind why we suffer or struggle in life. It kind of opens us up and breaks through the shell or the bubble we like to be in. Mm. Like my kitten, when I go out for a walk, you know, he's very sensitive to noise, especially fast cars. He likes to hide in my you know, arm because he does like he doesn't want to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there is so much we can hide from the truth or reality. So ultimately, we have to have conversations, mm-hmm. calm the mind, and you know, we can each one of us can be a better version of ourselves who we were yesterday. That's the beauty of life for each one of us. Okay. I feel like I have a question, JK, that I want to ask in terms of the religion, but maybe I should let you ask that because that's that's kind of been your thing through the last couple of years on this show. Well, again, uh, thank you, Nate, uh, for uh, putting me into trouble and <laughs> a troublemaker. And that's, that's what friends are for. Yes. So before I start the question, I just wanted to make some announcement. Yes. So it's been wonderful, like, uh, to... Uh, know UT and Beta and the good work they are doing as such and we wanted like to uh, support them like the way that uh, we can through uh, what good we can do and also I just wanted to understand that so that's how like I ended up um, uh, creating a YouTube channel and we are Mm -hmm. launching that and we have officially uh, launched it as well Uh, it's called Right View Lab I'm just sharing Mm -hmm. that so the right view lab uh, and also uh, excellent uh, webinar style for all the meetings that uh, Beta just mentioned about Karma Lab and Purpose Driven uh, Happiness Lab all combined together. It's more of a therapy session, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have not been regular. I have to apologize to them on that. But still, uh, uh, it helped me a lot like to have some uh, different perspective. But uh, to question uh, here is, uh, I'm a uh, declared atheist. I'm a non-believer. So how do I fit into this uh, concepts of uh, cause and effect and karma and all those things? Like Because I always protest and say these things as nonsense. Uh, it's a tough word for someone like to accept it. Uh, from my viewpoint, uh, uh, those things doesn't matter. So how does Buddhism, because general perception is like when we talk about uh, Buddhism, like it is viewed as a religion. And that is where like my uh, struggle comes in to fit into that domain. Mm. So help me with that, like UG and Vita, like uh, what do you have to say to uh, atheists like me, like uh, how we can uh, relate to your uh, offerings, like teachings or whatever, like you call it. Okay, very good. Uh, I think maybe you, it is better (laughs) answering that question. (laughs) Yes, I I told you in the beginning, I am a troublemaker. I'm going to ask (laughs) tough questions, hard questions. No, that's very good. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, From Buddha's view, there are, there is no difference between believers and non-believers. Yeah, uh, from Buddha's eyes, all human beings are the same. Mm. This is one of the starting point of Buddhism. All people are equal, and they have they share the same human nature. And also, all people have a common fa- uh, fallibility, common imperfection. And one of them, or collectively, Buddha called it uh, delusion or defilement. Yeah, if in psychological term, uh, we can call it bias or fallacies, and everybody has this. Mm -hmm. So it's the difference of spectrum, which part of the spectrum we are in. Some people have very strong yeah, uh, doubt, and s- some people are really skeptic, and that's okay. And even though believers have this almost similar delusion, hmm. so from Buddha's eyes, we are all the same. What well, the difference is the the 
whether we have the um, um, aspiration to achieve true happiness or not. Uh, in Sanskrit, this, this mind is called uh, bodhicitta, the mind to see for true happiness. And uh, Buddha said, everybody has the potential to achieve true happiness. But we have to aspire to achieve it. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. And what causes such aspiration within us? So it's kind of in counterintuitive, counterintuitive, but when we are confronted with life's suffering, uh, we crave and we seek for true happiness. So for the past two or three years, we have been under this pandemic. It was, it caused us a great suffering and pain mm -hmm. and everything. Um, but if you look at the history of human being, uh, this is just one of, one of many, many uh, suffering in the history. Yeah. Uh, in the past, there were also big pandemic and also uh, famine mm -hmm. and uh, big fire, earthquake, everything. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the middle of 18th century, there was a great earthquake in Portu Portuguese, uh, Portugal. And many people were killed and uh, all the city was destroyed. That caused great pain in people. And uh, many people became so spiritual mm -hmm. and uh, people seek for true happiness. Yeah, so we, we don't want to be confronted with suffering and hardship, but actually in many cases, uh, sufferings in life makes us spiritual and uh, cause uh, aspiration for true happiness within us. <laughs> Did I answer your question? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you just uh, disregarded me like as such. Whether you are a religious person or a non-believer, both are the fools. <laughs> so you just... <laughs> Uh, the same you said that like and uh, moved on to a, a different one and i just want to pull in nate into it again i understand right i'm uh i'm not uh denying that like the suffering is the root cause of our uh, desires and various other things we can talk about it but the question that remains is for example religious people right uh, not just non-believers right religious people are caught up in their own sufferings right for example nate is a believer of a particular religion and uh, i hate to say that like uh, whether it's christianity or any other religion uh, islam muslim i don't want like to blame anyone but all the religions are doing the same thing it is creating chaos among the people's mind mm -hmm. and fear and that itself adds to the cause of the uh, uh, suffering. So mind is the one which is causing us like more suffering than the physical uh, pain that we endure. So from Buddha's teaching, like I see that in the way, like why I am aligned to it is attracted to it is like he was against the rituals of the Hinduism, like in those period. And for me, like he looked like an atheist, right? He was kind of a, <laughs> uh, giving a different uh, path and not going with the deity worship or believing in God and all those things. That's what like my understanding of Buddha. And uh, how does that become into a religion as such? Religion mm -hmm. is like because of the mob mentality, the more masses, more people start following it, like then it becomes a cult and a religion or uh, how do, what do you have to say to religious people, right? For example, uh, people from different walks of life also come to your uh, meetups and they listen to you and how does that attracts to them, like for Christians and other religious people? What do you have to say to uh, like Nate and convince him like, uh, go on the path of uh, Buddhism rather than 
maybe this time Bida wants to answer first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, actually, you know, um, I feel like you're blaming religions for what is ailing humanity. You know, if we think about why all humans are suffering from the very beginning, you know, because we are born, we have to die. Mm -hmm. There is nothing of greater tragedy than this for all of us. We are mortal beings. There is a joke about that, you know, some minister asked the king, uh, or no, the king asked the minister, what's the uh, best thing that can happen to us humans? And the minister was like, oh, your majesty, it's too late already. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> that can happen to all humans. And the king says, well, okay, what is the second best thing that can happen to all human beings? And the minister says, oh, it is that if we die right now, because, and the best thing is it's already late because we are born. Mm. If we are never born, we never have to die. You know, we don't have to suffer. So it's like I tell people, you know, it's a joke, like what is number one cause of divorce? And they tell me lack of understanding, you know, difference of opinions, how to raise the children mm -hmm. and, you know, financial troubles. Yeah, that's true. But the number one cause of divorce is actually marriage. If you mm -hmm. never get married, you never have to get a divorce. That's why I think a lot of young people are choosing to live together. They're like, we don't want to sign the papers. They have so many bad examples of so many people divorced and all the shenanigans that go with it. Uh, at least in the Western countries. So, you know, if if there was no birth, there would be no death. But we are here, so we have to make the best out of it. So I think it's never good to, you know, point finger at something and blame them because then we are depriving ourselves of the opportunity to understand ourselves and my suffering. Each person has to ask that. Now, religions, are, yeah, there are, um, unfortunately, like you say, JK, the kind of mob mentality. And that too, humans, they love companions. They love to <laughs> group mm -hmm. together and band together and say, okay, we are the good ones. They are the out, bad mm -hmm. ones. Othering, mm -hmm. you know, the othering and dividing the line. So throughout history, we've had that, unfortunately. But it's more reflection of human nature we are all capable of doing that you know if we are if we have a lot of power and then we can get away with anything you know we are capable of doing any wrongdoing um i mean just look at the <laughs> politics in america now mm. you know, in other countries yeah like that's why they have the king you know the king's words is like kind of final many times and some presidents, prime ministers want to behave like a king. If they have the power, you know, they will do anything. So, so that's the danger in each human being. So that's what I love about Buddhism is places always the responsibility back in each one of us mm -hmm. instead of just, um, yeah. But I think Yuji has a lot of wisdom about history more than me. <laughs> <laughs> I think something that uh, Vita just hit on for me, JK, is, and I, we've talked about this before, JK, where I grew up in a uh, religious household. I grew up in, until I was about 25, I was very heavily into my Christian religion. But I would say over the last 15, 20 years, it's been less about the religion and more about the relationship and the spirituality. And separating you know separating the people as, as Vita said like churches are made out of people religions are made out of people and people can be fallible people can have faults people can be prejudiced you know particularly speaking about here in the south you know churches have been violent against women and and black people and you know people in the lgbtq community and that is not of god in my opinion that is of man using God as a cover for their prejudices. And so I'd say like the last 15 years for me, you know, I still go to church occasionally, but it's more about reading my Bible. It's more about praying and meditating and, you know, meeting with friends that share the same views on God that I do. And so for me, 
I don't mind, you know, talking to somebody who is Jewish or Muslim or Buddhist, because I feel like there is something in the seeking of truth, the seeking of knowledge, the seeking of what does this all mean? Because I think that's the question everybody's asking, JK, whether you're a person of faith or not, why are we here? You know, what are we doing here? What is the purpose of all this? Uh, and I think that, so that's a line I make. I do make a distinction between the Christian church, quote unquote, and my spirituality, because there's a lot of things that the church does that does not speak for me. Yeah, I mean, uh, the religious people are, why I say like they are dangerous is like they have mm. this habit of uh, spinning things around and taking credit for the modern technology or the science, the advancement, and just like they know everything and it's the supernatural that controls and they rewrite and readjust everything according to their own. And it's uh, gotten into politics and... Yeah, just like a politician, right, who wants to grab the power. Uh, the same thing happens, but uh, for me, like uh, from the Buddhist standpoint, right, why mm -hmm. does like the uh, Buddhist, uh, even Buddhist monks have become uh, in some part of the world, like in some countries, like... Uh, they created trouble and war and destroyed other set of people and genocides and all. So that is why like, I'm still struggling to understand it has nothing to do with uh, any particular religion. Mm -hmm. uh, and in terms of, let's focus on uh, the meetings like that you conduct, right? So, so can you talk about that? Like what, what kind of karma am I creating, right? Because I'm not going to lie and say that like, oh, I'm not suffering. I do suffer, right? So mm. uh, when we talk about these, uh, our work in nonprofit foundation stop now is like to fight for uh, human right violations and human trafficking victims, uh, abuse, all those things. So that is like people who are traumatized already uh, under uh, uh, the pain of victimizing. So that they are already suffering so much. How can you give them comfort, right? Mm. Is, is the, uh, just like the saying, uh, it is your karma, you have to, uh, you might have done something bad in your previous life. That's why like you are suffering. Is that what the understanding is or what exactly is uh, karma? Mm. So the teaching of karma is very deep and understanding the law of karma is like understanding advanced mathematics mm -hmm. so it's we, we cannot start from a high school level of mathematics we have to start from arithmetics of elementary school level <laughs> so when people are suffering so much uh, buddha didn't emphasize the past karma because it's like adding salt to the bruise. Mm -hmm. The victim have to suffer more by hearing the uh, karma, uh, teaching of karma. So for that people, for such people, uh, Buddha emphasized uh, creating, I mean, doing good deed, even a tiny good deed from now. That's the great start for people who are suffering so much. Then little by little, uh, they can recover. Uh, and they can regain human mind. Mm. So I think, you know, people who are suffering and have deep trauma are like abused dogs or cats. Uh, they are afraid of human being. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are so full of anxiety and fear. Mm -hmm. So for them, what is most important is getting uh, enough nutrition and uh, recover their normal uh, state of mind. And then uh, they can develop and then become a normal animal again. So we have to go through the same process. And then we can talk more, uh, more about deep teaching of karma. Mm. It's kind of like uh, something that uh, my dad always said, uh, JK, where, you know, and, and he was a Navy chaplain for about 25 years. You meet people where they are. 
not where you want them to be. Uh, you know, like if some, like if somebody is suffering, if somebody is going through something, you have to kind of meet those basic human needs first of safety and security and nutrition uh, before you can get to some of the deeper stuff. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I have a question to Victor. Yes. Uh, nice to see both of you, Victor and Vitsi. Uh, so in the earth, uh, all we are suffering depression and lots of trouble, you know. Mm. And we all searching happiness. Uh, actually, we are searching that how uh, we can be happy like that. So according to your Buddhism, so if someone feel depressed or depression, so how can they recover from it? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's a very good question. And actually for a person who did struggle with depression myself, I think I can speak for that. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, life is so hard. <laughs> now I realize it's kind of natural if you have depression or we just feel lost or confused. So mm -hmm. there's, there should be no stigma to it. So first we have to surround ourselves with people who recognize that and they don't treat us differently uh, with a stigma or something like that. So I think that's the most important element. We call that condition. So we talk about the law of karma, which is cause and effect, cause and effect, but actually cause condition have to unite before the effect is produced. So we need to, if, if the cause is troubling us, we're struggling with depression. So we need to seek good conditions first. Yeah, so good conditions are people who give us hope and they give us aspirations. For me, I found that in Buddhism. Uh, because my Buddhist teacher, Buddhist friends, they were so positive and they are all problem solvers. So like Yuichi explained, people who are struggling the most, it, they have a hardest time probably to practice good deeds. So that's why they are kind of, their growth is stopped or it's minimized. We need to be a very good condition in their lives and support them to practice good deeds, no matter how tiny it is, you which you said. Yeah, that's the power of good deeds. So for example, um, you know, going to the beach and do some beach cleanup together with people mm -hmm. who are struggling with depression. Because yeah, when I was depressed myself, like we were living in Japan with Yuichi, and Yuichi told me, Oh, let's go to the zoo. I was, I was depressed. I was like, I don't want to go to the zoo. I seen all the animals in the cages. That's going to make me even more depressed. Mm. Which he said, no, let's just go. It's a Saturday. You know, they just see the nature. There are trees too. <laughs> there are flowers too. Reluctantly, I accepted. So Yuichi became a good condition for me. I would mm. have stayed home and just, you know, spent another weekend at home doing not much. But then I went to the zoo and although animals were behind the you know if they were in the cage I couldn't interact with them and I was like no matter how bad my life might be I have it so much better than animals Buddha teaches us to be born human is such a rare blessing a blessing that is ours so kind of the problems that we think they are problems get minimized if we see we are already the winner of a super lotto which is called birth as a human being mm -hmm, mm -hmm. each one of us has this great gift so by going out meeting good people good conditions breathing fresh air and appreciating nature how many blessings we have little by little we get less depressed mm -hmm. and we begin to see the beauty of life and what it is we are here for if we don't find out our life's purpose or mission life's work each one of us is born to do something that no one else can do only you can do it so as we these good conditions will help us discover that and little by little we get less depressed less depressed and before you know it you are in the place of helping people who are still struggling with those issues and we're like holding hands going forward together mm. yeah i hope that helps Is that something that that uh, 
brings you the most joy uh, right now, Bita, is, is helping people kind of find out how I can be happier, how I can find my purpose, how I can find, you know, what, what makes me special in life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you said it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when we eat a good food, we, <laughs> we enjoy it too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, after a while, especially the older we get, it's like the same flavor, the same taste. It's mm -hmm. like nothing. I mean, it nourishes the body. We are grateful about it. And if we become greedy about flavor, you know, become too much in that direction, we <laughs> might do it weight or we might suffer unnecessarily. But when you meet people, each person has a new flavor, has a new aroma, new scent, new their life experience is different. Mm -hmm. And we always learn from their background, what the struggles they've been through. And it also kind of nostalgic too. Sometimes it reminds me that, wow, I remember when I was there and I was forgetting all the good people in my life who helped me. Thanks to this person in front of me, I'm being reminded how much assistance I have received in my life. So I would definitely agree that it's the greatest pleasure in life to be able to help people and go forward together. And they're helping me too. So by helping others, we mm. help ourselves. So it's mutual. We are all in the same level benefiting together. Again, uh, uh... Vita and Luci, I don't want to take much of uh, your time because you are uh, kind of, I was wondering like, uh, how do you manage to uh, have so many meetings and meetups, uh, even at a basic level and advanced level? Like I, I, I'm not fond of uh, rocket science or uh, advanced calculus. <laughs> <laughs> Joke apart, right? So you, you, you mentioned that. So my uh, time constraint is there, right? So we don't want like uh, to hold you up like for long and you might have another meeting. Like uh, I know that like we have the happiness lab meetup like uh, every Saturday as well. So I'm just trying to wrap up Amar and Nate. Like uh, if you want to ask any uh, mm -hmm. additional questions, feel free to ask right now because we can uh, uh, go on and on because wonderful persons I hear like we can uh, learn more from them. And the point here uh, for me, the struggle, Yuchi and Vita, uh, help me out if you can. Uh, how do I know I am good? So I constantly have this uh, struggle. Like, am I doing good? So am I doing good? Uh, am I a good person? How do I get to know that? For me, like, I think like I am doing good. But somebody else like might feel like uh, offended or they might think like I'm doing bad. Mm. Maybe beta first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the the answer is you will not know <laughs> you're a good person because there is no limit to how much we can do. Mm. Yeah, especially when you focus on gratitude, it's boundless. So it's, it's a good thing if you have this question, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, however, yeah, if you are too uh, doubtful, that's not good either. I think you is good about building our self-esteem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we are good to some extent, but we can always be better. How so? Yeah, it's, uh, I think we all think we are doing good. Mm -hmm. This is what they call self-esteem. I'm a good person. Actually, this is the foundation for everybody. Yeah, if we don't have this assurance, maybe, yeah, we, want, we might be depressed or, yeah, we lose confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to have uh, confidence, but to some extent, if you are too confident, that's another problem, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, Buddha called that a conceit. Conceit is not good, mm. but actually we all have this and uh, it has pros and cons, good side and bad side. So our mind keep wavering, uh, fluctuating. Sometimes we think uh, I'm doing good and I'm, I'm a good person, but sometimes we feel, oh, I'm not doing good, good and uh, maybe I'm not a good person. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are like a pendulum uh, swinging 
back and forth all the time. So actually this is the cause of human suffering, part of the cause. So uh, true, the true happiness that Buddha taught is called diamond-like mind. We will achieve such a very strong mind. It's a strong mind, but also it's a really flexible mindset. Mm. It's kind of contradictory. If we are too confident and strong, we cannot be too flexible. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And then people suffer. Even people who are really confident have to suffer yeah, because they are not flexible. So that's not the real true happiness. So true happiness is uh, full of confidence and uh, feel strong power inside, but still very flexible and humble. Mm. Such contradictory two mind coexist. That's true happiness. That's our the goal of Buddhism. That's wonderful. I mean, uh, I don't know how we can practice that, but mm -hmm. the, it's something that I uh, I don't know. Probably uh, I'll uh, revisit on that. Right. So once I uh, listen to all the lectures and teachings and some way like down the line like uh, it's always as you mentioned right the swinging of the pendulum right we are we cannot be happy all the time mm -hmm. and the sadness is waiting for its turn and it catches up uh, so you, you just have to be joyful on being sad as well <laughs> i don't know i'm saying it right or not uh, so if you are if you have to say something like to our audience, like oh, what will be the one thing like uh, for mm -hmm. them, like? Uh, so the most important thing is actually listening to the Dharma or the teachings, learning about cause and effect. So happiness or unhappiness is not happening randomly or by chance. There is a cause and effect relationship. Mm -hmm. If we listen to the teachings more and more uh, with the channel that you are helping us uh, create, yeah, if people listen and learn the cause and effect relationship, we become more and more empowered in creating a happy future because we learn to kind of not get too stuck in our past and then look forward to a brighter future is waiting us. We hear this again and again everywhere, but still it's so hard to go forward. So we need a good teacher to hold our hand and walk us through the path. So please join our meetups and let's learn together. Yeah, that's wonderful. Again, you create your own future and that I like it very much. And one final thing that uh, I'm just uh, out of curiosity, right? People see that like Buddha is like very passionate, compassionate person and uh, 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 Buddhist monks are like someone like who doesn't want like to go and attack them. So from your experience, like have you faced anyone like abuse you or uh, uh, threaten you both or in some way, right, uh, verbally uh, or attack you or, uh, for your uh, viewpoints? How do you take those things? Yeah, we uh, people, you know, every time people don't listen to us, <laughs> mm -hmm. they don't take our in teachings, uh, we feel uh, negated. And uh, yeah, sometimes they, they come right out and yeah, they say it. But you know, we don't impose the teachings on anyone. We respect the persons uh, who, where they're at. Like Nate said earlier, he learned from his father, meet people where they're at. So some people are, might be having a hard time our day so we can sit down and have a cup of tea together. <laughs> Tell me what is it that's bothering you? <laughs> mm. That's where we have to start. Yeah, we don't wanna, we never respond to anger with anger that mm. creates more darkness in the world. 
Well, that's wonderful. I mean, uh, it's so amazing, right? So I, I can't even uh, uh, think of like uh, attacking you guys like strongly with <laughs> words and other things. Uh, the a struggle is like then uh, how do you like do this uh, uh, for years together? Like, uh, are you, I mean, uh, some people do this as a professional therapist, but you make this as your uh, spiritual journey and your lifestyle. Uh, is it something like uh, that you both are uh, chosen this path on your own or is it like uh, by uh, birth or how, how does that happen? <laughs> yeah, uh, this is good for a whole new uh, interview session. Uh, yeah, but since we are running out of time, but briefly, yeah, I have chosen this path because like uh, yeah, I was explaining with to a Mars question, I struggle with depression a lot as I was growing up mm -hmm. and nothing was bringing me the joy that I wanted, that I was looking for. And I found that joy as I learned the Dharma, the universal teachings that apply everywhere, anytime. And I realized it's, it's, it works for everyone. It's not for certain people. Anyone who sees the cause and effect relationship becomes proactive and understand that we all have tendencies to be reactive and kind of waste our time and energy there. This works for everyone. Once I figured this out, I felt that this was my life's calling. And uh, I think humanly is impossible. Actually, we were about, we were gonna say, maybe we should cancel today's interview. <laughs> you <laughs> and I were having some health conditions. So humanly it's not possible, but we believe there is this powerful force in the universe. You know, there's mm. a great compassion that binds us all together to care about each other. And that's Buddha's power, you know, your higher power, that universal mm. force. So I don't want to take credit for it. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it's not you. Uh, thank you, Yuchi and Vita. Like I, I think I have forced you both like to come on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> so I do I have feel like uh, I grabbed some power from you both. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having us. It's a good opportunity, you know, on our own, we always bring an excuse, right? Oh, you know, it hurts here or I can't do this. Mm -hmm. We find excuses or obstacles. Somehow when we are in a group like this, you know, and you have such a pure intentions to spread the light, somehow we can overcome the obstacles. I mean, it's, it's not easy to explain. Mm. That's the power of power in the universe, backing each one of us up to find true happiness because we all deserve it. That's why we are born as a human being. Mm. Yeah. And I, I feel much better now than before this interview. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for inviting us. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you. Thank you both for your time. And I, I do think there is, when you get in a, a community, you know, when you get with other people and share ideas and share your experiences, I think there is value in, in all of that, in, in that collaboration. And so uh, Yuchi and Bita, we are very happy that you uh, made some time for us today. We want everybody to check out the YouTube channel so they can see more of your message and more of the teachings. Um, and and we, we definitely want to do this again uh, down the line to speak to both of you. Yeah, thank you very much you. for having us. Yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, the energy you all bring is so beautiful and pure. Thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate that too. I enjoyed this so much. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you everyone. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank everyone for watching.